let's go meet Riley Sager. Hello, Ramona. I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the ghost. We stand on the opposite shore. Hello, Ramona. I reach through mysterious ceilings, my only hope. just pulled off the interstate for a little bit because I'm making a little bit of a pit stop but I thought I would officially like start the vlog so hello welcome I am heading to Frederick Maryland to meet Riley Sager uh, for the book signing of middle of the night which is his newest book which came out last week not only am I meeting Riley Sager but I'm also meeting up with Lena from Lena's bookshelf and Gwen from Gwendolyn Kinsinger if you didn't know they are two of my very best friends part of the fab five uh, so yeah this is the second time we're meeting up for the year we just met up in Vegas which was a lot of fun I do have a whole Vegas vlog if you guys are interested I'll try to leave the link down below but I am actually going to be staying at Lena's house tonight and when I was telling her like my plans of traveling up I was like yeah I might stop at like some bookstores in the area or something and she told me like at the halfway mark there's this place called the Green Valley Book Fair and she told me like how cool it is and like how I could find some really awesome books so I thought I would make a pit stop because I don't need to be at her house until 3 and it's currently like 11 10 yeah I'm really excited so I'm gonna go in here see what this book fair is all about maybe pick up some books I don't know and then when we get back in the car I'll kind of give you guys like a little bit more details of like what's to come It is hot, so I'm sorry if my AC is blowing really loud, but I just got out of the book fair. It was really busy for like middle of the day on a Tuesday, but I ended up getting three books. Um, the first one I got was Sophie Cousins, The Good Part. I've read one other Sophie Cousins book and I really enjoyed it for the most part. And this one just sounds really cute. Lucy Young is 26 and tired, tired of fetching coffees for senior TV producers, sick of going on disaster states and done with living in a damn flat with roommates who never buy toilet paper. After another disappointing date, Lucy stumbles upon a wishing machine. Pushing a coin into the slot, Lucy closes her eyes and wishes with all her might, please let me skip to the good part of my life. When she wakes up the next morning to a handsome man, a ring on her finger, a high power job, and two story book, perfect children, Lucy can't believe this is real, especially when she looks in the mirror and staring back at her own 40 something face. Has she really skipped ahead like she's always wanted, or has she simply forgotten a huge chunk of her life? As Lucy begins to embrace her new relationships and the perks of maturity, she'll have to ask herself, can she go back to her previous life, and if so, can she stand to leave the good part behind? So, I thought that was really cute. And then I got a thriller. This is What the Neighbors Saw by Melissa Alderman. I've never seen this before, but it's not. This is described as desperate housewives meet the couple next door in a chilling story of murder and intrigue set in the well-to-do DC suburb. 
Sometimes those darkest acts occur in the most beautiful houses. When Alex and her husband Sam buy a neglected Cape Cod house in an loose, exclusive DC suburb, they are ecstatic. Sam is on the cusp of making partner at his law firm. Alexis is pregnant with their second child and their glamorous neighbors welcome the couple with open arms. Things are looking up and Alexis believes she can leave her troubled past behind. But when the neighborhood's picture-perfect image is shattered when their neighbor Teddy, a handsome, successful father of three, is found dead on the steep banks of the Potomac River. The community is shaken, and as the police struggle to identify and apprehend the killer, tensions in the neighborhood mounts to long buried secrets start to emerge. The community is shaken, and as the police struggle to identify and apprehend the killer, tension in the neighborhood mounts and long buried secrets start to emerge. In the midst of the turmoil, Alexis takes comfort in, budding, in the budding friendship with Teddy's beautiful and charismatic widow, Blair. As the women grow closer, the neighborhood only becomes more divided. And when the unthinkable truth behind Teddy's murder is finally uncovered, both Blair and Alexis must re-examine their friendship and, discuss, and decide how far they're willing to preserve the lives that they've carefully constructed. So, sounds really good. And then lastly, I got a coloring book, which I think I got a clip of that. Um, this is the Bohemian Spirit ones. Honestly, there's one picture that sold it for me. And it's glittery. Like, yes, please. Oh, here it is. I love this one so much. That was, that was like the selling point for me. But I used to love doing adult coloring books. So I kind of want to get back into that. And for $4, you can't beat that. All right, I just put the GPS on my phone. It says I have an hour and 15 minutes till I get to Lena's. So let's hit the road. Made it to Winchester, and now I'm gonna go eat at Cookout. And I'm so freaking excited, because I do have Cookouts where I live, but like they're in the most inconvenient spots, so I'm really excited. So I'm gonna go there, kinda chill, maybe look for like a local bookstore around here. downtown Frederick and I think we're heading to a bookstore um, before we go get dinner and then before we go to the yeah. event which I'm super excited about um, but yeah uh, the drive was super fun Lena drove so shout out to Lena idea what this vlog looks like and I don't have that many clips of the Riley Sager event because I suck um, to make a long story short my phone had less than 10% battery <laughs> and as soon as they call his name to come to the stage and start talking my camera battery flashes dead battery cool love that for me so yeah 
Jesse sucks at preparing for something like that. But I thought before I end the vlog, I can kind of show you the books that I got, some things that stuck out to me that he talked about. So I'm sorry. I just wanted you to know this is me trying. Okay, so obviously I got Middle of the Night by Riley Sager in a signed copy. It is so beautiful. I've actually already started reading it, so I'm not very far in, but there it is. To Jesse, great to meet you, Riley Sager. The, oops, the event was hosted by a bookstore in Frederick, Maryland. So it's called The Curious Iguana. This is like one of their bookmarks that I got because I did shop at the bookstore. So yeah, check it out. It was a really cool bookstore, highly recommend. So speaking of the books that I got at The Curious Iguana, I got this one, which is We Used to Live Here by Marcus, I can't say the last name, but I saw this one, I believe on like, neck alley or goodreads i saw it somewhere and it just sound so interesting and i pitched it to gwen and i think she also got a copy but it says get out meets parasite in this eerie haunting debut and reddit hit soon to be major motion picture about two homeowners whose lives are turned upside down when the house's previous residents unexpectedly visit sounds really good i cannot wait to read that one Moving on. Uh, the next one I got is Daniel Valentine's newest novel, which is Two Sides to Every Murder. My friend Gwen, she has a Patreon for her podcast called Talk Bookish to Me. I believe this is going to be the August Night Owl book club pick. We all got to vote and it was super fun how we did it. I'm not gonna say how we voted, but it was very clever. So this is YA. I know, I know. Hear me out though. Most people's births aren't immortalized in a police report, but Olivia was born during the infamous Camp Lost Lake murders. 17 years later, her life looks pretty perfect until she discovers the man she calls dad is not her biological father. Now she needs answers about the, her bloodline and the only place she knows to look is Camp Lost Lake. Most people don't spend their formative years on the run with an alleged murderer, but Reagan did. In the court of public opinion, her mom was found guilty of the deaths at Camp Lost Lake, but both of them have been hiding ever since. But Reagan believes in her mother's innocence and is determined to clear her name. Luckily for Olivia and Reagan, Camp Lost Lake is finally reopening, providing the perfect opportunity to find answers, but as they inch closer to the truth, someone is dead set on keeping the past hidden, even if it means committing murder. Ooh creepy. I believe I showed these already, but I went to this place called the Green Valley Book Fair. And so I picked up this one, which is what the neighbor saw. I believe I've already given a synopsis, but it's like a domestic thriller set in like the DC suburbs. It says Desperate Housewife meets the couple next door. So sounds like it could be good. I also have Sophie Cousins' The Good Part, and I know I gave this one, so I'm really excited. This sounds more contemporary than romance, so that's the only thing that I'm like a little worried about, but I mean, for four bucks, you can't beat that. And obviously, the coloring book. Of course. The next book I got is Ashley Poston's A Novel Love Story, which I'm so excited for. First of all, this cover, stunning. So, it sounds so good. Oh! And to wrap up this little book haul, I have Crocheting for Dummies. <laughs> and you're probably confused, but Gwyneth was actually getting rid of this book. I've actually loved to crochet when I do have the time, so I decided to pick up this book, so. So the event was a lot of fun. It was kind of crammed into this like basement of a church, which sounds creepy, but it wasn't. But it was so freaking hot there was over 300 people it was sold out we were all like crammed into this basement the chairs were right on top of each other and i'm gonna be honest i was so uncomfortable because i know i was sweating my butt off and i was literally sitting in the middle of two of my besties we were supposed to have richard shizmore who is another author kind of facilitate the um interaction but for some reason he wasn't there so we just kind of jumped into the questions and some of the questions that were asked like yeah they're good but like this you're meeting riley sager and you want to ask questions or kind of like repeat questions in a very different way to get like somewhat of a different answer like i just felt like some of the questions 
were not as juicy as I would have wanted. I did get to ask what are three words that you would use to describe this book, which is my book club Sleep When I'm Dead's famous question, or famous. <laughs> it is the question I ask all the time because it's one of my favorites to ask. And he said, sweet and spooky. And he said he got that from Jason Rikulak. So if you don't know who that is, that is actually the author of Hidden Pictures, another one of my favorites. So it was really cool to kind of hear that. He said it will bring you to tears. And I'm just like, <sighs> but yeah, some of the other things that were mentioned was like, how does he come with, like, does he come up with like his characters or his plot first? And he said he comes up with plot and he comes up with like a plot who's doing the plot and how does he get to the end those are the three things that he focuses on and so for middle of the night he said that he couldn't sleep one night and so he saw like one of those like motion censored like floodlights come on to the neighbor's house like across the street but there was nothing there and then like it went off and then like the next house did the same thing and then it went off and then it went to the next house which was super creepy and weird and that's kind of like where the story takes place let's see what else did he mention he talked about like like titling his books and things like that and he said that he's not very great at titling his books and that the title of his books are mostly from the publisher and so like he said like lock every door he originally was going to name it the apartment sitter and thank god that got vetoed because i think it just sounds like a very typical average kind of like a kindle unlimited title no offense but lock every door just sounds so much better and i love it uh there was mention of like books that you know will they ever see the big screen and he said that he's been trying very hard to get one particular book and it's been like a four-year process and it's still kind of like in the works but not in the works and that would be home before dark which is my favorite <sighs> he said like hollywood is just really weird he said like people would rather see a tv series but like he said it's funny because like his books do come to an end <laughs> so he said like it's just kind of weird like people don't want to see movies people don't want a limited series so he said he hopes one day it will happen but he said if it happens it happens the other th question there was a question and i can't remember exactly how it was worded but it was like has there ever been a book that he's written where like what he thought the whole book would be about was completely different than what the finished product was he did say yes and he said it's one of people's favorites of his and he said like it's probably going to upset a few people but it's the last time i lied which i'm like oh my gosh like how in the world like what did it like what did it start with and like how did we get here but it was kind of shocking i do remember gwen asking when we went up to the booth like you know which one of your books do you think is like underrated or misunderstood and he's like oh for sure without a doubt it survived the night and gwen is the biggest stand when it comes to like defending survive the night i loved the book i didn't a hundred percent like get it at first but then like once i talked to her i was like oh yeah that totally makes sense but she has always said like people who don't get it just don't understand the whole thing and like they were both cracking me up because they were like completely defending that book which i agree like i feel like like if people would understand like the actual twist they would get it a little bit more um let's see he did also mention um that he put up something where there is a i guess his next book um he did like a timeline or his publisher did like a timeline post of all of his books and there's one like in in the 1950s i want to say it's 1957 or 1954 and he could not give any other like information about the book but he said there is one and it's like that's your hint so that's your little easter egg so yeah i think i covered everything that really stood out to me unfortunately i did give him my friendship bracelet with the book club on there and explain it but i think just because like we were like at the very end of the line and like you can kind of tell like things were wrapping up it just didn't seem like a very authentic time to like ask him to like be on my book club so unfortunately it just wasn't just wasn't meant to be but i did reach out to him and ask him like in his instagram dms so i don't think anything will happen 
but if it does you guys will be the first ones to know so yeah that is everything for this video thank you so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys will also join the sleep when i'm dead book club pick for the month of july which is middle of the night the live show i believe is july 29th it's whatever the last monday of the month is and it's going to be with me gwen lena but we're also having jordan and summer join us as well so i'm very excited to talk about the book i'm very excited to read the book so yes Let's go ahead and do our Paul Print Pal shout outs. I'm going to do Michelle's Cozy Corner and Pride and Paperbacks. Thank you so much for being a Paul Print Pal members. Thank you so much for your love and support. It means so much to me. You guys can actually be Paul Print Pals as well by hitting that join button next to the subscribe. So for a few extra dollars, you get exclusive content from me. You also get early access to all my videos as well as like separate reading sprints and things like that. It does help support me, but if not, you can always support me by hitting the subscribe button and hitting the thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye. Hello Ramona I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond